What motivates me to pursue my graduate education here was that it was a leading institution. I knew that I was going to have a supportive mentor here and I thought that was something really important and I know that that's not something that's found everywhere. Um, I also thought it was going to be closer to home. So I think there are other factors that are more personal that you should also value when you're choosing your program. Prior to coming to Stanford, I worked as a middle school teacher and even though I love working with students, I saw so many systemic issues that I thought needed to be fixed and I felt that research was a great way to address those issues. I would like to go into teaching after I graduate and um, especially as is becoming more apparent these days there's a lot of equity and change that's badly needed in education and it's been really exciting and motivating to be able to engage with other people who have similar interests and to really dig in with one another and kind of what does it look like for us to pursue our research and teaching at the same time and uh, learn more about what my role looks like in that moving forward. What keeps me going every single day is the environment here. I'm really inspired by my lab. I have an amazing advisor who really is transparent about the way that she leads and lab members and lab mates. They're very effusive and they really create a lab community for me that I find uh, very inspiring as well. Well, my first motivation in, in doing my work here at Stanford is just one question, which is that how to make the world a better place. Here from the peers at Stanford, I've learned that it is not just enough to know something unless we do something about it. It's not just enough to gain knowledge unless we apply it to make the world a better place. And that has just manifested in my research as well, where I'm not just asking questions about why the things they are the way they are, but also how we can improve them. Uh, one such question that I'm currently working on is how we can better predict forest wildfires, which, as you might know, is already affecting all the people around us and will hopefully help in getting people out of danger before catastrophe occurs. I'm finishing up my PhD, but at, you know the next step for me is to continue research. I want to stay in academia. I, I want to have my own lab one day. And where I want to go is to further study traumatic brain injury. And so the impact that I'm really looking to have on the world is developing tools that will help uh, doctors diagnose traumatic brain injury and then potentially also come up with solutions and uh, um, <laughs> different ways of treating uh, traumatic brain injury. So I view my impact in terms of two different spheres. The first is in a really technical sense. I'm really interested in contributing to the conversation uh, about how we help reduce our anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions to create a more sustainable world. I think we're starting to see a lot of the adverse effects of climate change already. And that's not just, you know, here, uh, we're out, you know, in the middle of fire season right here in Palo Alto. If you're here, you can smell the smoke. And if not, you are not missing out. Um, but, you know, we just had a, you know, a hurricane down in Louisiana and, and these things happen every year. So those are the effects domestically. Uh, but internationally, we see right rising heat waves in India, famine in the Horn of Africa. The effects of climate change are not just diverse, but broadly impacting a variety of folks that we don't necessarily think about when we're thinking about the question of, oh, is climate change real? What are we going to do about climate change? So I would like to be able to provide technical expertise to the question of not just how do we continue to reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, to create sort of a, a more sustainable and equitable world, but also how do we address the adverse effects of climate change that are already happening? What do we do uh, for areas that have been adversely affected, uh, but might not necessarily have right the large research budgets um, of, you know, America or the EU or whatever corporation um, that decides that they want to invest in clean tech. Um, so I'm really interested in that question, um, especially thinking about emerging markets. Uh, now, the second area uh, of impact that I find um, to be essential and has been really central to my experience as a graduate student, just a student in general, uh, is thinking about the journey um, that you know, our underrepresented students face. You know, I'm a black student, and that's something I've been very conscientious about throughout my time in undergrad and especially in graduate school. I've spent a lot of time recruiting, um, trying to convince you know students that they belong at Stanford, that Stanford 
you know, really needs, you know, more representation from folks across, you know, race, gender, socioeconomic status, sexuality, religion. Uh, we need that if we really want to create an equitable world. We need that if we want to create a more compassionate world. I think technology that's built in a vacuum can be very destructive to people that are not, you know, privy to those conversations. And so one of the small things that I think I can do sort of in this moment and hopefully more so going forward uh, is be able to sort of address this question of why is there, you know, such a gap between, you know, Stanford and other institutions with, you know, so many resources and, you know, people that have been adversely affected by structural inequality and what can I do to help close that gap? I guess uh, the biggest thing that I can pull away is that I've been really inspired by different mentors throughout my uh, scientific career. I think mentorship is something that's really, really, really important to me. I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for an amazing mentor during my undergraduate um, studies. And so whenever I can, I try to take opportunities to mentor undergraduate students and um, high school students whenever I get the chance. And definitely there are outlets for that here at Stanford, which I really appreciated. Science communication is one of the things that I think uh, is sometimes not seen as important as the actual research itself, but it's almost just as important so that the uh, lay, that the public understands um, the imp impact of the work that we scientists do. So I think mentorship, no matter where I go, whether it's into academia, into industry, or anything else, I think I'd love to continue mentoring students who are thinking about science or even just a little bit interested in it. Because I think as a woman in science, sometimes we find that the stakes are a little bit um, stacked against against us and I found great inspiration from the mentors along the way that have directly encouraged me because they've definitely been the ones that have made a huge impact on me and led me here and I would love to continue doing that for others. Something I've really learned uh, the past several years in my research is uh, how many unanswered questions there are that we still have to learn and how we can use the way that we approach these questions as a way of also to teach and to help other people learn as well and uh, to use what I'm learning and what I'm doing to be able to bring other people into those uh, efforts as well and uh, to learn from each other is uh, really exciting and a lot of fun and I'm hoping that that can be a way to impact other people and future scientists and future learners down the road. I am engaged in research practice partnerships in, with Stanford and the surrounding community and school districts. And so even during this summer, I've been working on research to help schools prepare for reopening um, in light of COVID-19. Um, and so I hope that I can have an immediate impact. Also changing Stanford and making it a better place for graduate students, for families and students from underrepresented backgrounds. And more broadly, I hope that my research will inform school districts on the best way to use resources to meet the needs of students who are so often overlooked. The impact I hope to have is really to re uh, reach out to the public and to policymakers to make actual change that will improve the current situations that we are at. I think we need to be spending much more resources and time and effort into protecting the environment and I want my research to have some direct impact for that.